Hey folks, welcome back. My name is Krishna. If you're new to the channel, welcome. So in my last video, I talked a little bit about the new Mac Mini M4 and how I'm using it with Photoshop. There were a lot of great comments and feedback and questions about the Mac Mini M4 and more specifically how I use a scratch disc. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I use a scratch disc with Photoshop and Premiere and what a scratch disc is and why it can be an advantage to have one. So without further ado, let's get into it. Think of a scratch disc as virtual memory. So when your Mac starts to encroach upon the upper limit of your RAM, if it still needs to use extra RAM, it will start to use your Mac's internal storage as virtual memory. It's a slower type of RAM because you're having to read and write from a drive as opposed to reading and writing from RAM itself. But it does help when you're working with larger files. Something that I hear about constantly from folks is that they are running into situations where their design applications start to run really slow or start to behave rather awkwardly or, you know, inconsistently. And the first thought is that there's probably something wrong with their installation of these tools. But more often than not, there's a major culprit. The culprit is that your uh, internal drive may be completely full. And if you're launching a design app like Photoshop or Premiere, and you have less than say 20 to 30 gigs of free storage on your internal drive, uh, your performance in these Adobe apps is going to be very, very limited. So it's best to have a dedicated scratch disk, especially if you have an almost full internal drive so that you can uh, mitigate those types of problems. Uh, typically when I'm already occupying about two thirds of storage on my max internal drive, I will then take any of the older data and move that off to another external storage device. Uh, I don't like to have a drive that is more than two thirds full. And the reason for that is that typically a scratch disk is anywhere between 20 to 30 gigs. And depending upon the file sizes that you work with, it might be more, it might be less. I just don't want to have to run into that situation where if I'm using my Mac laptop, for example, where I need to use Photoshop, I don't want to be in a situation where the Mac's internal drive is so full that I can't comfortably use Photoshop. Setting up a scratch disk is actually pretty easy. All you have to do is go into Photoshop's settings and then choose scratch disk and you're given a list of your drives and you can choose the appropriate scratch disk that you want. I typically recommend having a dedicated scratch disk, but it really depends upon what your needs are and what your budget is. You don't need to have more than a 256 gigabyte solid state drive as a scratch disk. I would recommend having a very fast connection. So if you have Thunderbolt 3 or greater, your scratch disk will be more performant as opposed to just using a regular USB 3.2 uh, based drive. So the faster the connection, the better your scratch disk is going to perform. Because remember, it's always going to be operating slower than dedicated RAM. So I hope you found this video to be useful. If you haven't considered using a scratch disk, now might be a good time. And it's not just Adobe apps that utilize a scratch disk. If you happen to use other tools like Clip Studio Paint, it also uses a scratch disk as well. So check your favorite design program, look in the settings and see if there's an option to have a dedicated scratch disk and you can point all of your apps to the same scratch disk and it shouldn't be a problem. If you found some value in this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up so more folks can find it. As always, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for the comments and feedback and I look forward to uh, making the next tutorial for you. Thanks so much and see you next time.